Jimro.com and today we have a super exciting guest coming on board. He is someone who is breaking the stereotypical myth that vegans can't be strong. So we're going to be talking to him about where he gets his protein from, what his training routine is like and what he loves to eat and his favourite protein sources. So we have got John Thomas, also known as the Bodybuilding Vegan. A brief overview. My name is John. Um, I go by the Bodybuilding Vegan on Instagram. Um, I'm 30 years old, but I, I wasn't always vegan. I wasn't raised vegan. My parents weren't vegan. Um, I was around 10 years old when I had a friend tell me how she felt like we should not eat hamburgers because they, they come from cows. And I kind of blew her off like it. it it made sense, but like it didn't, it didn't click for me in that moment. But over the next few months, I started like eating less meat and becoming a little bit more vegetarian based. But I was, I was bullied pretty heavily as a kid. So I didn't want to like say that I was different or that I was weird and be vegetarian because like 20 years ago, it was kind of different. It, there weren't a whole lot of options. Um, and then about three years into that, so I was 13 years old, I, I learned a little bit more about factory farming and found out that like dairy cows, once they stop producing dairy, they just get turned into hamburgers too. So um, being vegetarian is great, but like we could do a little bit more. And so I was like, well, I'll try being vegan for a week. And I think I messed up on like the second day. I forgot there was like milk and certain chocolates. Yeah. Uh, but I was a 13 year old kid. I didn't really know. And there weren't the options there are today, but it's been 17 years now. Um, and so I, I've been vegan for more than half my life. Um, I actually, I started working out at 15 years old. So all the muscle that I've built has been entirely from plants. There's been oh, no, wow. animal. yeah, yeah. So, um, in some ways that's cool. It's like, this is what I've been able to do. I'm 250 pounds just through, you know, plant protein, no animal proteins at all. Um, but I also, I don't have that framework of like, oh, this is how I felt before and this is how I felt after. Um, so I rely on other people, whether that's clients or friends, to kind of tell me if, if they feel different going from like a typical diet to a plant-based diet. Um, but yeah, that's kind of me in a nutshell, I guess. Um, I can't yeah. believe 10 years old, it like started for you. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's so cool. Because um, I suppose from like our, my, certainly my perspective, I look at it as I wish that I'd gone vegan when I was 10, even though I can see bodybuilding pre and post. Um, for me, I just think, oh, I wish I knew this. Like as a real young like, youngster, so I could have made changes back then. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it. I'm glad that I wasn't, in some ways, I'm glad that I wasn't raised vegan. I'm glad that it was a choice. and 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 at least on my journey, it took me time to get there because it allows me to have compassion and understanding for people that aren't there yet. Um, a lot of, I feel like in a lot of cases, vegans will look back with the knowledge they have now and be like, well, look at what you guys are doing wrong when even just a few years ago, um, they might've been in those same shoes. So I think being able to connect and be like, hey, I, I wasn't always that way. Or I, I used to think in the same ways you think. Um, it allows us to connect with people. And I think that connection is what might allow our, our message to spread a little bit more. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're definitely, we were definitely guilty of that. Like we went vegan. We saw uh, 30 seconds of the dairy industry uh, as well. Went vegan immediately. Um, and you end up with this sort of, this this rage, this desire that like, your brain's scrambled and you just want to run out. And we did. We ran out um, to everyone. family and friends. And like the way that we outreached within the first two weeks is perhaps different to how we'd have approached this situation now. So that, that's definitely a really valid point. You know, learning how to get your message across to people. In a way that they listen. Yeah. And when they see guys yeah. like you, 250 pounds, saying, you know, I, I eat plants, it's a great message to be putting out to people. Yeah, <laughs> you're really busting that stereotypical yeah. vegan. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that I feel like I was thinking, I was kind of reflecting on this last night. Like, um, I don't necessarily feel like this is like my fate or or like my destiny that I, I have to be a vegan bodybuilder. Like it's not necessarily 
something I'm forced into, but it, it is one path for me that I can choose to live. And right now it, it feels like the best path because I mean, selfishly, it, it helps pay some of my bills by being able to advertise for coaching and things like that. But more important to me is, is trying to make a change before I go. And I think that, that there's plenty of restaurants out there that can prove vegan food tastes amazing. There's plenty, plenty of scientists and doctors that can prove that it's healthy. Um, but I do get met in the gym with a lot of, a lot of young guys that, that want to be a bodybuilder that want to grow. And they're like, well, I, I actually agree with a lot of your ethical beliefs. It's just, I don't think I could grow without doing this. I couldn't achieve my goals without eating meat and, and it's hopefully I can show through at least my own efforts that, that this is possible. And, and, and I'm like you guys, like over the years, more and more people have been getting into this and it's, it's really cool that it's, it's not just any one person. It's like a collective movement. So the fact that we can even get on this podcast and show it like yeah. really, really shows what, what, the, what we can do as a team. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think like you say, like being the image that you're that big, vegan bodybuilder it it does create conversations in the gym where like you say that the younger guys are like oh like you can do it like it's not just people telling me I actually can see this guy is vegan and he's massive and he's building muscles and yeah so like you say that they align with the ethics but they once you see someone like yourself in the gym it just confirms it even more like yeah. for you when we first went vegan um you genuinely thought he would shrivel up and be that stereotypical vegan um you kind of program that way and he was like that's it i don't i don't even care it doesn't yeah, matter yeah. about my muscles i just can't yeah. pay for this anymore um but yeah we didn't know that actually you'll thrive and we even got stronger since yeah. being vegan through um that's what we found anyway yeah our connection was so strong i mean we sat on the sofa and it was on the tv on the wall we cried for like three hours when i saw this dairy cow like we couldn't, I couldn't, we couldn't talk to each other. We didn't speak right. really for most of the day. But we were like, that's it. You know, if bodybuilding stops now, if everything stops now, so be it. Like I'm never paying for this ever again. If that's the case, fine. And it was only over the weeks and the month, actually a really short space of time, I realized how good it was. And I was like, what? Like I've got no inflammation. My gut health's better. I'm recovering faster. I'm pushing harder in the gym. I'm getting better pumps. I'm training for longer. I was like, oh, Man, what? <laughs> what? what like, time, man? It's, oh, it's just a crazy journey. That's amazing. Yeah, like I, I never personally got to experience that shift. Yeah. Um, I, I would say you guys as a couple are lucky to have gone through that at the same time and be in the same mental space because it. Some people it takes a long time to see this. Some people never even open up to it. And yeah. I know own experience it can make dating or relationships hard so it's cool that you guys were so in sync right when it yeah. happened <laughs> yeah yeah i never realized how lucky we were until i started speaking to other vegans who are like oh my husband or my wife or my partner just can't, like won't even watch the footage or they won't change or that's got to be really tricky so i'm actually really grateful that we yeah. both were sat here together watching it up both our mindsets were like boom like yeah that's it we're vegan we had that epiphany <laughs> moment <laughs> yeah uh, yeah, it was mad. So the main question I'm sure everyone would want to ask you is where do you get your protein? <laughs> <laughs> your protein sources and what do you say to people who ask you? Um, you know, usually I would I would turn it back on them and be like, Well, where do you get your protein? Because I get <laughs> about forty grams a day. I I don't have any issues. Yeah. Um so I think getting getting more into this, there is a, a vegan from a health standpoint, and then there's a vegan from a bodybuilding standpoint. And those are two very different things. If you're if you're watching this and you just want to be vegan or you just want to be healthy, I wouldn't even worry about protein. I just worry about eating healthy foods. If you eat largely unprocessed foods, you're gonna get all the protein that you need. Um, especially if you if you live somewhere like like in America, like there is, it's just so easy to get protein. So I wouldn't really worry. Now, if you are trying to be a bodybuilder, a few different things come into play. When you're just being healthy, you can definitely get some protein from beans. That's fine. You can get some protein from nuts. That's fine. But on a bodybuilding side, if you try and base your protein off of like beans and nuts, you're going to get so much other fiber and carbs and fats with those foods that your body, at least at my level, where I'm eating four to 5,000 calories a day, 
my body won't be able to keep up with with all those like uh, fibers and, and things that are going to slow down your digestion. So um, I guess like the top bodybuilding protein sources that I use, um, I do a lot of seitan, which is made from vital wheat gluten, a lot of uh, TBP, which is textured vegetable protein. It comes from soy. Uh, I do tofu as well. And then uh, pea protein isolate, like in protein shakes or like smoothie bowls. That's that's going to be the bulk of what I get. And I usually do eat about six meals a day. Each meal is probably around 50 to 60 grams of protein. Right now, my coach has me at 340 grams of protein a day. So. Nice. Nice. So difficult <laughs> in this. Really tough getting up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so much protein <laughs> yeah. as well. Like everyone thinks that um, you can only eat like just vegetables and salad and that's it and there's so much more variety actually different ways to get your protein in yeah yeah we never ate such a variety of food since well, before being vegan it was really restrictive diets you know it was you know uh it was chickens rice broccoli six times a day and it's just so boring and then you look back now and you think if i wanted it to make it taste nice i put plants on it uh you know it's <laughs> yeah. just mad and then you go vegan, everyone's that must be so restrictive. I've eaten more vegetables in the last two and a half years than I ever have. Like yeah. it's most it's crazy. Yeah, you're do, you're doing it right. When I first started, I just ate a lot of like the vegan junk foods or like peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I didn't really <laughs> love vegetables. Um, yeah. I'll thank competing for that, being on a contest prep diet and eliminating so many foods for so long and being so hungry kind of changed my brain to where like before you couldn't have paid me to eat like a raw carrot yeah. but now I'll eat yeah. Carrot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah first thing I, but i'll eat it like yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <I'm a> <laughs> but not when i when i started it was just purely ethical so i wasn't eating super healthy i was also a kid so i didn't i didn't really know as much as i know now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's that's brilliant what um what's your favorite training systems? I mean, have you got a preferred? Do you prefer like split routines? Do you prefer push pulls? Um, what's your favorite training systems that you you typically train with? So, um, right now I'm training five days a week, and it looks something like um like a push day, a pull day, a leg day, then a push day, then a pull day, um, with some rest days sprinkled in between. Um, the goal there. Uh, my legs are relatively well developed. My upper body still has some room to improve. Um, so hitting hitting upper a little bit more frequently than lower, and then like the mindset in the training is is usually to get to get warmed up fully and then hit like a really hard top set. Um, so like for me, uh, my best top set recently on deadlifts was I want to say like five hundred fifty five pounds for seven. And then I'll usually like lower the weight a little bit and do like a back offset. Um, and that's kind of like how we've, we've structured my programming. There's still some volume work included as well, but like the goal is to have a few different exercises each workout that I, I really hammer for that top set um, and, and try and continually make growth or progress through that. Nice. I bet you get everyone like staring at you in the gym, especially because you wear like all your vegan stuff as well. Like, oh, like, oh my gosh. Yeah. How is he lifting I, so much? I was at the gym yesterday wearing uh, one of these want to save mini shirts that has the bodybuilding vegan logo on it. And uh, this guy just like came over. It's at a new gym for me. And he's like, are you really vegan? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. And, like, cool. I've been vegan or I've been, tra I've been training here for three years and I've never met another vegan. And I was like, oh, cool. Oh, well, we <laughs> and um, but then he walked away and, and the trainer I was with, he's like, that guy's never said hi to me in three years. <laughs> they hear he over and says hi. So I was like, <laughs> why? You know, I got like green hair. I wear rainbow shoes. Uh, I, I love pinks and like bright colors just because it does make me stand out a little bit, but not because I'm an extrovert. Like I don't really... I don't really love to talk to people on that level. Like, I'm, I'm maybe like, it's a little bit uncomfortable for me at first. Like it took me a long time to get good at like podcasts. Um, but since I can like dress differently and I'm somewhat larger than most people and I have vegan like plastered across my chest, like it's, 
it's changed my life in the sense that I didn't realize how many other vegans were out there. Yeah. Like I think in the maybe like one to two percent of the population, but since I never expressed it, like people had known me for five years and didn't know I was vegan because I just kept my mouth shut and like training. And yeah. I'm like, I guess I kind of missed out on all that time. Like I could have been advocating and just sharing, just showing. Like if every vegan wore a shirt like this every day, we'd really see how many others are out there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, I'm a bit similar. Like we do a lot of activism and it's not it's not in me at all to be on the street talking to people about this. Um, but you do whatever you can for the animals. But um, so many people who are nervous could just put on a T-shirt or anything just to connect with other people or plant seeds in other people's minds, um, yeah. which is an easier thing to do, isn't it? It's all forms so, of activism, is you know, even though not speaking to anyone, wearing that T-shirt and standing out in a crowd. It catches people's minds. Even if they don't even speak to you, they go home. I saw this big guy deadlifting like <laughs> yeah. all that way. He's got vegan. <laughs> like, you know, it gets the gears going. And all they've got to do then is just be curious enough to put in Google vegan. And then off they go. They just start looking yeah. and learning. And yeah, and seeing seeing that sort of thing. So it is activism. Yes, yeah. On it all them levels. Do you, do you find yourself that it's good activism in the gym or, or on your social medias and... Oh, yeah. Like, so I used to just make friends and they would ask for my Instagram and, and my Instagram handle is the bodybuilding vegan. And that would usually be when they realized because yeah. I, I, I wouldn't <laughs> or anything like that. And they'd be like, oh, wait, are, are you really? And like people will do that now when they come up and see the shirt. They'll be like, are you really vegan or is that like a joke? And I think there's still just that um, mental hurdle for a lot of people that you can build muscle as a vegan. Um so, yeah, I, I, I pretty much, I've told, <laughs> I've told other people until I get a, like a head tattoo that says vegan, um, I'm going to wear the shirts. So yeah. if I get tired, I'll put it on my head. It will be impossible to miss. Um, yeah. and then people won't. <laughs> <laughs> From all angles, everyone will know that's yeah. the vegan guys lift so much. <laughs> It's just, I think it's really cool, you know, like normalizing it in places like gyms and things like that. Um, you know, where typically bro science would, people talk about how much animals that they eat. You know, it, but by normalizing it and by showing up with your vegan stuff on, I mean, that's half the reason why vegan muscle come about. Because after going vegan, we went and bought all the vegan t-shirts. And I didn't want to wear a t-shirt if it didn't have uh, something for the animals on it. And where we spend 90% of our time in the gym, I'm thinking, well, there's 90% of my time where I'm not advocating for animals. So we Googled like gym wear and then we thought, oh, let's just go for it. Let's make our own gym wear, something positive and, uh, and normalize it in them settings. And it's just so cool. Um, Saturday, we're off to London to train with a, with a fully vegan rugby team, the Green Gazelles. You know, oh, and so cool. there's 200 members of this team um, from all different age groups. Half of them are military. Uh, we're talking to them and they've got vegan med packs, like field packs and stuff now. And it's just cool to see it normalizing in these positions where yeah. you think change is happening. You know, where it's it's coming around. That is incredible. I, I didn't even know that there were vegan rugby teams um, or yeah. even options for the military. Like, because I... At last I checked, I had a friend that was through Instagram, was in the military in the United States, and like they were mostly vegan. Like they wanted to be vegan, but there were times where it just wasn't practical for them to be vegan in the field. Uh, so it's really cool that you guys are you guys are a step ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's gonna be good fun on Saturday. I don't know what's gonna. Yeah, I can't wait for that. And um, on days where you don't always feel motivated for the gym. How do you put yourself in a position where you're like, no, I've got to go anyway? Or do you take those days as a rest day? It depends on the day. Um, I try to be a little bit more respectful than when I was younger. When I was younger, like even if I was sick, I would go to the gym. Like, I, like nothing would, would stop me. Um, and I realize now that's a bit selfish. Um, if I'm not sick and it's just kind of like a battle of mental will, I'll usually show up. I'll at least go. Um, and then I, like, I'll tell myself, like, there was one day where I had to drive, like, six hours and then meal prep for, like, two or three hours. And, like, that was the only time I was going to go to the gym after that. Like, I was just, like, I was just shot, like, that day. And I was like, well, let's at least go. 
And if it sucks, you can go home. Once I got there and I, I, I went through a few sets, I was able to do that workout okay. Um, I do struggle sometimes with the pressure of, of this. Like, I do feel like I'm wearing this shirt. I'm representing vegans. So if I have a bad day in the gym, if I don't hit, what's funny is I know my numbers. Nobody else knows mine. Nobody knows if I made a or not. So like, yeah. even on like bad days, I've had people come up and be like, oh yeah, good job. And I'm like, that was three of them last week. But I just like say thank you anyways. But I think that's harder for me. Less, less on the physical side, more on the mental side of, if I don't do my best, I'm like kind of letting the animals down or I'm letting this image down or saying, or vice versa. Like if I'm angry in the gym, if I look like an asshole that day, well now I'm just that asshole vegan. I'm not, you know, whoever I am. So, um, I guess like if somebody is looking for advice, I would say at least show up, see how you feel, but also be realistic. Like if you're that type of person that never misses a day, and you love the gym more than anything else, and you're just not feeling it that day, you're probably going to still be there tomorrow. So you could go home. Um, the last thing, like what I, what I advise my clients is do what you feel truly safe doing. Like, like if you're, if you're, I guess it depends. Like me, when I went through a breakup, the gym was the only thing that like, I had to look forward to that day. I, it, on my off days, like I noticed I was more depressed on my off days. Um, but if you're going through it so much that you can't focus and you, and you drop a weight on your foot or you get injured or you lift too angry, it's not going to do any favors either. So I guess I've really made this long, but I guess like the biggest thing for me personally, I try to be really in tune with myself. Like, am I just tired? Is it something I can get past or am I going to be so mentally distracted by what's going on that it's probably safer for me to not go get hurt? Yeah. 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 Kind of judge it by how you're feeling that day with, we, yeah, we can definitely relate to the uh, the letting the animals down thing, mm. and I suppose because there's the two of us, like we use that. So like I come in, I'll be like, oh, do you know, I'm the Mel's like, but the animals, and we gotta go out <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, okay, all right, then we start getting the stuff together, and it's mad what you can do for the strength of others more for the strength for yourself. So you know, when you have the animals in mind, for me, and I do weird things like uh, we do it to each other in the sets. So we could be doing like, say, for example, squats. And I go in thinking, okay, I'm going to get eight. And you'd be on the seventh rep. And in my mind, I'm almost pushing cows out of the kill line, like one after the other. And I think, a few more cows out of the kill line, let's go. And I just use that. And people think it's probably a really crazy thing to admit that I do mentally. But I find if I'm Im imagining myself, you know, military pressing sheep up out over a, a fence. I can always get two or three more sheep until you get that true failure. So it's using them weird mind tactics, I suppose, to to get the most out of yourself. Yeah, pushing yourself. And I think you're really right with like if you go into the gym and you're feeling like angry or um whatever like whatever, you're you're under a microscope, aren't you? Basically, to everybody else. They they yeah. always see the vegan in the room, whether <laughs> you notice it or not, everyone's seen you. Yeah. Um, and they will be watching. We often look in the mirror and there's someone looking back and they're like, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Someone across the gym, like four yeah. machines back. Like, like, be happy, be happy. We can't see a machine. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a battle we have to fight with kindness, you know, and uh, enthusiasm and passion, and um, it's yeah. difficult. It's you difficult want to be approachable sometimes. for others, as I think, yeah. as well, to come and chat about about um, how you build muscle as a vegan, and then lead on to the ethical side of things. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it's a great way in. What is what is competing uh, as a vegan like? I mean, I've competed as a non-vegan. I know what that feels like in my body. Um, what's it like competing as a vegan backstage to stage? And yeah, well, I have nothing to compare it to. I've only I've only competed as a vegan, so kind of like you, I, I don't have the other side. Um, I don't get to wear the shirts on stage, so I just blend in. Like, yeah. I, I'm uh, one of the other competitors. Um, we don't really get a chance to say, hey, I'm, I'm vegan. I thought about getting like a big tattoo across my back that says vegan, like that might do it. Yeah, um, you do this. <laughs> but um, I, I'll just speak from my own personal experience. Like a lot of people don't, I don't think they realize how hard competing is mm -hmm. um, until 
Like I don't I don't think it's something you can fully convey without doing it yourself. Yeah. Um it's probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Um I'm getting ready to start prep up again in May, so I'm excited, but I am also nervous. Um yeah. Just because like beyond the own like physical toughness, the 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 you kind of get worn down mentally. Um, by having your food low and your output, like your cardio, very high for, for long durations, your body fat comes down. And like for me, my energy, like my overall like cognitive energy goes down. My ability to socialize goes down. Um, and for the, I, whenever I get very close to the, the stage um, and my body fat's at its lowest point, I think I get like almost a little bit paranoid. Um at least for me, I'll start to think that the people closest to me are maybe trying to like hold me back or sabotage me. So like even my mom, like I know she just loves me and she actually drove me to one of my shows last year. So I didn't have to drive. Like I know she's there to support me in my head. I know, but for like split seconds, I'll be like, well, maybe she thinks this is too hard on you and and she's going to try and like pull you out of it or she's going to try and slow you down. Or she's going to question you. Why is she questioning you? Like, do you really have to push this hard? Do you really have to eat that little? Are you sure you can't eat off your plan? And like, I know she's just being my mom and being sweet and supportive. But in my head, there's like this switch when you're that mean. I just think you're always in a little bit of pain. And and that kind of scares me. Like, I want to I wanna really challenge myself this prep to try and fight those voices and um, stay a bit more positive and and try to live my life a little bit more while I'm in prep. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm yeah. honestly a little for it, uh, just based off of how prep was back in 2021. So, yeah. Nice. Oh, thank you for being so honest about that. Because um, I think it's really good to, but actually, other people who want to do competitions to know actually what your body goes through and how your mindset changes. So, um, yeah. Thank you for being so honest. Yeah, and like it's good that I've done this on my end because like I've talked to other clients and like walked them through their first shows and they're like oh you told me this a few months ago but like I didn't really believe it. and like now I know it's- <laughs> yeah. yeah you can support others going through going through it <laughs> it sounds horrible it is horrible but it's actually kind of normal if you weren't feeling this way you're probably not ready to get on stage <laughs> um yeah but uh I would like to throw that out there. Like I am vegan for the end. So if you told me I couldn't be a bodybuilder because I'm vegan. Okay. Um, if you told me I was going to die 20 years younger because I'm vegan. Okay. Um, I am not vegan for the health. I am vegan just for the animals. Um, but bodybuilding is, is definitely not healthy. Working out is healthy. Being fit is healthy. Lifting weights is healthy, but, but competing I tell everyone it's not healthy. Um, so don't, don't get the two confused. Like being a vegan bodybuilder doesn't mean you're a healthy bodybuilder. It's still, our bodies aren't meant to be that lean in, in the prep phase and not meant to be as big as they are in the off season. Um, so they're just two passions of mine. One activism, caring for the animals, and then also, uh, bodybuilding. So, yeah, yeah, I think we, we definitely align with our passions. We're, we're hundred percent the same as you. Yeah. That's why we love you so much. Like, yeah, yeah your ethics there. And like you say, you're like, if I die 20 years younger, who cares? Yeah. Like, I can't pay for that. Um, yeah, yeah I love that. What's, um, love- what's- being vegan is healthier so we will all live longer for it so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. it's healthier yeah. <laughs> but it's, yeah. yeah what if? it's just a really smug coincidence that it all lines up perfectly it's all brilliant <laughs> it's like oh. a benefit. yeah <laughs> yeah but it's, it's crazy when you try and talk to people about it how when you can come at any different angle you know like it ties up it's, it's an airtight thing like it's difficult to get across to people but we are winning we're getting there yeah. Well, um, I was going to ask, what's your favorite uh, exercise? What's your favorite body part to train? What's your favorite exercise? Oh, that's a good question. Um, oh, man. I don't Maybe know. Like, the worst. <laughs> <laughs> you told me, like, I have one session left and then I'm going to die. It would, have <laughs> to, it would have to be legs just because I guess there's something in my being of like the amount of pain that you're in while you do legs like you really feel alive like you feel dead <laughs> in 
<laughs> yeah. You feel very alive. <laughs> yeah. So probably like like legs is almost like a spiritual like experience for me because I'll get nervous the morning of. Um, it's the only time I've ever thrown up while training. Yeah. It's it's hard. So probably legs. I do. I don't love deadlifts from like a lift like i probably really actually dislike them but the satisfaction i get when i hit a new pr like that's that's probably like the best feeling in the world for me so maybe deadlifts um i don't know like if i was just gonna do like a fun workout something like arms but like that's not as fun as like killing yourself in the gym i don't know i'm weird like, <laughs> yeah yeah it's not quite as spiritual as leg day but it's just yeah i know yeah it's like i wake up i'm like oh it's leg yeah. day after it, I'm so glad I went. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, shaking down the stairs, just like, the yeah, you got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and to yeah. finish off, what is your favorite vegan meal? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. hey, this is coming. Um, <laughs> so it's hard because there's a lot, but like, I'm pretty easy here. Uh, a good vegan pizza is probably like my favorite, like, very off plan cheat meal um i don't know i i just love like the crunchiness of the crust with all the different flavors i just went to this place i'm in tampa right now tampa florida and they had the a it's a burger pizza and it's been like 17 years since i've had mcdonald's but it tasted like a mcdonald's burger on <laughs> the, it was so good yeah. um, i mean that like compliment like the food that i would like grew up on it took yeah. me back so that's probably like if i can have anything cheap meal probably something like a pizza um if i'm trying to keep it like somewhat bodybuilder friendly i noticed that pancakes works well like i could i could eat a ton of pancakes on like a cheat meal day and have good digestion and be good to go the next day so if i'm like just doing like a refeed pancakes are awesome yeah amazing i love that yeah before arm day then just get that big pump of all that pancakes in there yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah oh thank you so so much for talking to us you're such an amazing advocate for the animals and also for other people who may want to be vegan but they are scared to lose muscle and things um yeah you're you're awesome for anyone such great influencer um for anyone who wants to follow you where can they find your social media platforms and, and things what's your handles yeah so i it's pretty easy to find me i'm at the bodybuilding vegan on instagram uh that's probably the easiest way if, if you want to reach out and and send me a message that's that's super easy to do if you don't have instagram and you're watching this you can just go to the bodybuildingvegan.com there's a spot where you can leave a message um or reach out on there but that would be the best two ways and um my messages have been getting filled up recently um but i do get back to everybody it just might give me a day or two i might miss it but i will i will get back to it eventually so if, if anybody's listening if any questions you're vegan or not or curious whatever shoot me a message on this oh, thank you so awesome. much